Hey everyone, it's part 5 of the Campus Network. In the last video I just configured the access layer doing Portfast, BPDU Guard, Storm Control, um, some port security stuff. And yep, yeah, that was pretty much it. So all of these devices now have their IP addresses. They got that through DHCP from the DHCP pools at the distribution layer. As you can see we have connectivity. So now what we're going to do is configure the data center up in the top left in VLAN 250. So what I'm going to have to do is configure um, these as trunk ports allowing VLAN 250. I'll make these VLAN 250 actually. I'm going to make a modification here. The way I threw this together is not going to work. Um, I initially had planned this when I threw the topology together. I was going to do something different, but I'm actually going to leave it on the one VLAN just to do this load balancing thing. So ignore these redundant links, just imagine we'll use just one link. Um, initially I had configured um, different interfaces here, but I'm just going to all do it in interface zero, keep it simple. Never mind. So don't get confused with that. So we're going to configure these as trunks. These will be access uh, ports on 250. And we're going to make a dual instance of HSRP. Essentially, we'll have, say, for example, the default gateway for this one will be 250.1. This default gateway will be 250.254, 250.1, 250.254. However, both switches here will both have 250.1 configured on them and 250.254, such that this one will be the primary switch or the active switch for 254 however should that switch happen to fail people uh, rather the host configured with 250.254 can still reach that gateway via this router and conversely this router will be the active for 250.1 this will be backed up as 250.1 so this the servers with the gateway of 250.1 can access it through the active router here however should that fail it'll be backed up via that so it's going to act like HSRP as it ordinarily would. However, rather than just like having one switch do all the routing and one switch lying idle, backing up, we're going to split the load between the two of them and both will actually back each other up. So I think that's pretty much the rough description. Like I said earlier, this is actually a layer 3 link. And from here it'll all be layer 2. So with that said, that little preamble, let's just kick on and do this. So the first thing I think I'll do, we'll configure these trunk links. So I'll go into here. And I'll do my show CDP neighbor. And we're going to connect to the data switch 1 and data switch 2. So that's going to be interface FA01. And we're going to do switch port trunk end cap dot 1Q because it's a layer 3 switch. Switch port mode trunk. Switch port trunk allowed uh, VLAN 250. And just turn off DTP. Okay, look. And similarly on FA013, same configuration, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk, and we'll do a switch port trunk allowed VLAN two fifty, and we shall do a switch port non-negotiate. So that's that one done. And move to the next switch enable show cdp neighbor and on this switch is going to be fa010 and fa012 so same process just using different um, interfaces so we'll do fa010 first oh interfaces <laughs> fa010 and switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 250 and switch port no negotiate. And just the exact same process with interface FA012. Oh. <laughs> allowed VLAN 250. Okay, so that's the trunking. However, you'll notice we'll have the inconsistent ports here. We'll need to go and fix that. So let's do a 
show CDP neighbor here. And it's FA01 and FA010 on our local interfaces. We don't need to change the encapsulation, <coughs> excuse me, because it's not a layer 3 switch. <coughs> excuse me. And FA010. Okay, so that should restore port consistency. And similarly, let's check this one. Okay, these are 12 and 13, that's good. We can just range these then, keeps it simpler. Let's port mode trunk, switch port trunk, allowed VLAN 250, switch port non-negotiate. So, show int trunk, that seems to be fine. Okay, now what we need to do, like I said, is configure HSRP on our interface VLAN 250 on both of the switches. So first thing I'm going to do though, is before I do anything, is just turn IP written on each of these. just so we can have connectivity with the rest of the network when it's all up and done. So, before I do anything actually, I'll need to configure the actual physical interfaces, or rather not the physical interfaces, the switched virtual interfaces on the physical switches. So I'll do interface VLAN 250, and for DC1 I will do 250.2, and for DC3 I'll do 250. DC2 I'll do 250.3, sorry. So IP address, we'll use the second usable address. VLAN 250. Okay. Let's see if we can ping 250.2. Okay, so they're up. Now, here comes the HSRP. The instance I'll use will be standby 1 and standby 250, just because it keeps it quite straightforward. And like I said, the default gateways, the virtual IPs will be 250.1 and 250.254, so the first and the last IP addresses in the network range. So let's go, we'll do... This one is interface VLAN 250 with a standby 1 IP address 50.1 and we'll make this one the active for the first instance and we'll do conf t and VLAN 250 standby 1 IP 192.250.1. Okay, look. Now, same again here. We're going to take the, the new instance of 250. We'll give it the IP address of 250.254. And we're going to make this one the priority of 120, sorry. And this one with the preempt command. Now on DC1. We'll just configure our second instance with just the IP address because this is not going to be the active one. We don't need to change the priority on this one. Okay. Give that a little bit of a second to pop up and just synchronise with each other. So as you can see here for instance 250, this one is going to have the higher priority of 120. It is going to be set to preempt, which is what the P denotes. It is in the state of active, which is what we want. And the IP address is 254. For the instance one, group one, it's got the default priority. It's not set to preempt. It's in a state of standby, which is what we want. The active one is 250.2, which is DC one. 
and the virtual IP is 250.1. Now if we go to DC1, the inverse should be true by now. Now it should be up and run. So let's have a look. So in this one for group one, the priority is 120, it's set to preempt. It is the active one. The active one is the local one, which is this switch is what we want. Standby one is 250.3, which is DC2, and the virtual IP address is 250.1. That looks good. Secondly, we've got group 250. This is the backup one. Priority is set to the default. It's not set to preempt. It's state is standby, which is what we want. The active is 250.3, which is DC2. The standby is local, which is this switch, and the virtual IP address is 192.168.250.254. So that looks all good. Now, because we have our data center, we're not going to deploy DHCP because we want our servers to have a static configuration so they're very identifiable and reachable. So I think I will just use, uh, like I said, I'm not going to do use the two interface, I'm going to keep it simple because the data center is just going to be on the same VLAN. And I'm going to configure this one, I think I'll make this 250.100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, just to keep it straightforward. So let's just do this then. 192.168.250.100. And I'll make this IP address the first usable. Right. Just check this is up and running. Oh no, it's not because I've not put the actual. I need to put these in Access VLAN 250 first. I'll just configure these first, then I'll do that next. So I'll do 192.168.250.101. This one will have the default gateway of the other switch or the other active switch. Both switches have got the IP addresses on them. Okay. I'll make this one the first one again. 50.1 That's fine Let's say 250.106 Was the last one a 101? Oh sorry, uh Last one's 250.1, so I'll make this 250.254. Okay, doke. Right. Now I shall go into these switches. What ports have we got these on? FAO7, 6, so the 27. Right. I'll leave port security off just for quickness. And 
and same here we've got one I think that's one is six int range fa01 to 6 mode access switch port access vlan 250 spanning tree port fast spanning tree pptu guard enable storm king okay so actually just what I need to do as well I'm going to configure uh, spanning tree rapid pvsd Okay, so let's have a look see. There we go, got a reply from that, 250.1, now this one's using a different gateway. And that one's fine. So like I say, in the case of this, it's gateway is 250.1. Both switches have 250.1 configured, so if this one fails or this one fails, there's still a gateway to get out of the network. However, rather than burdening one switch with all of the routing, we've used two instances so that we can actually split the load between the two of them. So, like I say, do show stand brief. We can see that 250.1, this one here, this switch is actually doing the routing for it because this is the, the active one. The local switch is the active one. The backup is DC2. And conversely, for 254, no. 254, the active one is the local one, which is DC2. And the backup for that one is 250.2, uh, which is DC1. So we have full connectivity here, load balancing and redundancy built in with the HSRP and I think I'm going to call this a, a day on this video. The next part I'm going to go into is to configure EIGRP and then we'll configure our default gateway outside of the, the network um, and do some other little tricks and that should be us. Okay, so this is the end of this video and I'll see you guys shortly. Bye bye.